Okay, we're back live here in Stanford University in uh, Palo Alto, California. Actually, Stanford, California. It's its own town. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the silicon noise. I'm joined by my co-host Jeff Kelly this week and uh, Ofer Kahane, who's Origami Logic. Yes. You guys are stealth mode? Very stealthy. You can't see my face, <laughs> but uh, okay, we've revealed that now. Welcome to theCUBE. So you can just Thanks. watch the microphone there. It's a little noisy now. The session's getting out. I just saw Kara Swisher from All Things D, Bud Colligan, all the luminaries are here. Uh, all the top Excel partners are here and all the startups. You guys are a startup. So um, talk a little bit about why you're here and what are you guys talking about in the hallways? You haven't launched yet or what's the deal? <laughs> yeah, so we're still uh, very stealthy. Haven't launched yet. So uh, can't reveal a whole lot about what we do. Uh, happy, of course, to talk about the things that uh, we solve, the problem space that we tackle. Um, and we're here, uh, as this is uh, certainly the event to be. We're one of Excel's uh, recent investments in the big data space. Um, How and much all did they put in? Um, we, we raised a total around of 9.3 million uh, uh, late last fall. Series A? Series A, with Excel being the primary investor. Awesome. What, now, so talk about the big data. What problem are you guys solving? What's the big, uh, big challenge? So the challenge we're solving is uh, how big data gets truly really applied to help marketing folks. Um, marketers are really struggling with the fact that they're surrounded by this ever increasing number of customer touch points. Uh, each touch point typically comes with some uh, marketing system to manage the content, the workflow, the interaction with the audience across that channel, whether it is web in the early days of digital marketing, down to advertising, search, um, social, which is now an explosion of a plethora of different types of channels and apps. And the more innovation uh, we feed here in Silicon Valley and wherever else, uh, driven by the excels of the world and funding a lot of those uh, next-gen marketing platform or social interaction platforms, the more touch points there are, the more data is generated by these systems, and the more complex is a marketer's world in around how do they touch the customers, where should they touch the customers, how can they make sense of the marketing landscape in and around them. And that complexity is not really effectively tackled by any existing platform or tool. Thankfully, the underlying big data platforms, such as the ones coming from Cloudera and Friends, are helping deal with how does one store the data, how does one process the data at scale, the next phase beyond that of verticalized big data apps is one where it is how do business people actually monetize the data? And we're a perfect example of how does one apply that trend to marketing. We're building really, think of it as Splunk for marketers or Mint for marketers, that centralized cloud-based platform that lets folks in a marketing organization without IT involved, without data scientists involved, have all of the data that matters to them automatically collected into this big cloud based platform, automatically integrated, because integration of data in any environment, and certainly in the marketing environment, which is super siloed, is extremely complex and difficult. So we apply data science to automatically integrate the data sets, and then provide beautiful, visual, marketer-optimized user experience for marketers to directly interact with the data and make sense of the world in and around them. So I, I definitely want to get into some of the issues around the challenges facing marketers and uh, how they do their jobs. But I wonder if you could talk a little bit about, as an entrepreneur, uh, you mentioned uh, you know how the, the kind of the infrastructure layer where we're storing and processing data mm -hmm. is starting to mature. Um, talk about as an entrepreneur where that the opportunity for for uh, yourself and others to actually start taking advantage of that infrastructure. Um, you know, is it is it is, is it a lot easier today to start building a big data application uh, than it was a year ago, two years ago? Talk about that transition and what it means as an entrepreneur with an idea for a big data application to actually have uh, that underlying infrastructure and platform, whether it's Hadoop or, or something else, um, available to you, and how that kind of makes it possible to actually turn these apps into reality. Yeah, so I think we are getting to that point that it's a whole lot easier to develop the application layer riding on top of the platform. I'll say much easier than it was a year ago, still a lot more difficult than it will be two or three years ahead as the platform is still evolving. When I say platform, I talk about the platform at large, Hadoop and the ecosystem and any of the other NoSQL and big data uh, mm -hmm. building blocks. There's still complexity around tying the individual pieces together into your underlying data platform, uh, but that is getting less and less difficult uh, over time. So it appears to me that this is the perfect time for entrepreneurs um, to, to think about not just what is that next potential piece that's missing in the underlying infrastructure layer. I think that's heavily crowded. A lot of the solutions are in place. The big players and the big bets have been made. 
It's more about how do you help businesses or consumers, depending on the nature of the application, um, monetize the value of the data. And as an entrepreneur, you don't need to think as much about solving the very fundamental, basic computational and uh, storage challenges that Hadoop's, the Hadoops of the world help you solve out of the box, but rather what is a specific business workflow you can help uh, tackle or the consumer need you can help tackle. And focus on that, um, and I think that's where a lot of the next generation value will come from big data or the next step in the evolution of the industry. Absolutely. Now the conversation is starting to turn to or include how, you do, how do you monetize that data that mm -hmm. all the, the players like Cloud Eras and the Hortonworks and others of the world are actually helping you store process. Now it's about uh, entrepreneurs like yourselves building on top of those platforms and actually turning that data into, into something that can uh, a business value. Exactly. Um, so you, you're taking a uh, kind of a function specific look at, yes. at the way uh, the way you build your application, who you're, who you're targeting, marketers in your case. Uh, I, I wonder if you could talk about why you took that approach as opposed to building a more horizontal platform, uh, you know, with visualizations on top of big data for, you know, for, you know, maybe not just marketers, but sales or finance or whatever the case may be. Why that specific focus on marketers uh, or a specific domain? Yeah, so, so I think um, there are two questions in one here. First, why marketing? Our sense after thinking a lot about the application layer uh, from an entrepreneurial point of view, was that marketers are uniquely positioned in having, in being really data and budget rich. They truly strategically impact the success of the companies they drive. On the other hand, um, they are skill and insight poor. Skill because to monetize the value from that data richness requires a lot of complexity, a lot of data science, which does not exist in most organizations, neither the IT nor the marketing department. Um, secondly, we felt that the value that we could provide in solving the, these pain points would be one which will have impact on the top line of, of, of companies versus potentially dealing with other potential uh, verticals. Uh, though functionally speaking, there are similar problems I'm sure that can be solved for any of the other functional um, departments that you've mentioned, whether it's finance and there are companies chasing that, or whether it's sales or lots of companies chasing that and so on and so forth. Now, why vertically focused, in this case functionally focused, versus purely horizontal? Right. There's an under, underlying theme here which I think is important and, and I, uh, my, my, my bet is we'll see more and more of that over time. The complexity of any of the functional data sets, marketing, sales, finance, and so on and so forth, is becoming so high, and certainly in the marketing space, given the data being so siloed and diffused and heterogeneous in, in variety and form, that makes any of the generic tools inherently ill-adept and incapable to truly embrace the complexity of what needs to be solved in a way that is immediately valuable to the marketer and artist. You need to apply lots and lots of data science in order to automatically fuse those data sets. You need to apply lots and lots of um, data-specific uh, connector development to collect the data, which is very complex in its form, and normalize it into something that would be useful specifically for marketers. And certainly so, the user experience, I believe, over time, will end up being um, more and more verticalized in its, in its value, such that um, if you're building something for marketers, just taking the generic ways to visualize data won't work. You need to visualize data in terms that are specific to marketing data types and specific to the marketing business processes, which are different from sales or, or uh, engineering or uh, logistics or whatever the case is. Stay differently. Our thesis is that over time, generic BI, while will be useful for certain use cases, will diminish in value given the complexity of the, the data specific and function specific technology you need to slap on top of it in order for it to be useful out of the box for the business users. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, obviously you can't talk a lot about your company right now, but talk about just as an industry participant, what are the big misconceptions of big data? Is it easier than people think? Is it harder than people think? Um, obviously, it's pretty hyped up right now. Even yeah. here at Excel, where you know they're considered, you know, at the, at the front edge of the world, they talk about consumerization of IT like it's a new thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you have the shadow IT, you have consumerization happening, been around for a while. What do you share um, about big data that you could clear up or just comment on? Uh -huh. So a few different thoughts. First and foremost, the hype is is certainly broad. I think over time. Um, the, the, the changes that big data is driving will be as massive and, 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 and um, impactful 
on the entire industry as the evolution of the early relational database has been to enterprise software 20, 30 years ago. Um, that being said, when folks use the term big data, a lot of the complexities behind that are actually um, being obscured. First and foremost, it's not just about the size, it's about the variety of data. Um, and a lot of folks seem to be missing that point. Another super critical point is the human aspect of it, or the organizational aspect of it. In many organizations, to really get to that per optimal point where you can leverage the data in big data terms, you need to really break down silos which are not just technological in nature, but rather or organizational in nature. Um, for example, you want to fuse CRM data with uh, social data, with uh, uh, product uh, you know, inventory data, and so on and so forth. It's not just a technical problem that's really difficult to tackle, but rather organizationally, how do you get access to all these data sets? Who owns that within the organization? And so on and so forth. In, in, in my earlier career, I've been more in the networking space, and we used to speak about the networking stack, layer one through layer seven, and there are all these difficult technology challenges there. We used to typically joke that the most problematic challenges are actually layer eight, the human layer, the organizational layer, and I think this applies to here in big data. Final point to be made, ultimately, the value that folks drive out of big data manifests itself in small data. It's those pieces of data within this massive haystack of silo data you mesh together uh, that really matter. Uh, and ultimately, it's about the individual business user, how fast can they consume the value from that data, how fast can they find those nuggets of value that drive action and insights that drives ultimately some monetization versus some theoretical concept of here's value in the data. You know, we, we've seen that too. We, you know, I, I was one of the first to coin the term fast data, implying little data, because it moves around a lot, it's loose data, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, but I, I would agree with you there. Uh, but I want to go back to some of the technology um, issues because you know even though layer eight, the human layer is uh, challenging with mobile, mm -hmm. which throws off a lot of small data, um, gesture data, little mm -hmm. you know gestures here and there. Um, but you mentioned relational databases. The database is a big part of the stack now, where you have software-defined networking moving up. That concept of virtualization now enabler. Um, what is the future of these stacks? There's stacks out there, there's technology stacks, and the database in particular. Can you comment and just give some color to, you know, which is once a element, hit the database, get a return. Now yes. you have a variety of data. Yes. So database got to fit into these stacks, a lot of di multiple stacks, little dimensional issues. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on this whole database yeah, component? Absolutely, so, so I think when folks talk about database in legacy terms. Typically there was the relational database, a single uh, source of truth, uh, data warehouses, you know, dangling in around it and so on and so forth. Um, but folks spoke about the database and data was always pretty rigid and stuck into that template. I think reality of modern data is first and foremost super, super siloed, super fragmented, super diffused. So it's no longer a database. It's many, many different data repositories that you need to suck the data from in order to drive value. Second point is the data is so varied in form. Unstructured data, structured data, temporal data, geospatial data, um, relationship data, graph data, all these things that certainly in our world marketers need to face. And traditionally, they would need to use different tools to analyze different aspects. A text analysis system to an analyze unstructured text from social. Some uh, graph mapping software to figure out relationships between people and product and networks and, and, and whatever else. Um, and so on and so forth. So I think we'll just see this, this plethora of, of uh, you know, more and more data types that need different special tools for them. And the complexity ultimately will need to be dealt with, certainly when you look at it from a stack perspective, by higher abstraction layers that help hide that complexity under something that's useful for a business person that doesn't need to and shouldn't care about whether some of the data is stored in, in one form to tackle unstructured data and some other form in order to tackle relationship or temporal or some, any other form of data set. So net, net, no longer the database, but many different types of data stores for different types of specialized forms of data that will need to be hidden at the application layer. Yeah, I think you're right on there. Um, you know, a business user doesn't care when they make, uh, have a query or exploring data ver via visualizations if it's a relational database working under the covers or Hadoop or anything else. It's just yeah. they want an answer to their to their question. Yeah, exactly. They have a business problem they want to solve. It. They're not necessarily 
care about the underlying infrastructure. Um, I want to go back though, you mentioned kind of the human problem, and I was actually at the uh, SAS Global Forum yesterday and there was a, a customer panel, and one of the gentlemen there was uh, worked for a financial services firm, and he said, you know, we've had some, we have some long-time employees, people who have over 30 years at this company. Yeah. And he said, you know, one of the biggest issues is, of course, the changing the way they think and do their job when it comes to using data mm -hmm. uh, to actually make decisions. Now, of course, now SAS, interesting enough, is one of those kind of more horizontal plays, and they've got a big BI yep. layer, which I'm sure you're, you're quite aware of. But I wonder, how do you, if you're talking to a CMO, and they're saying, look, this sounds like a, a, a great way to, to to get better insights into our business, but how do I go about convincing and all of my employees who've been doing things a certain way, getting answers a certain way, to actually start adopting these new approaches yeah. and do it in a way that doesn't kind of, um, you know, you don't want to go in and say, you know, the, the analytics knows better than you. You want to go in and say, this is going to kind of complement what you yes. do and what you yes. know. How do you how do you have that conversation and what are some tips for CMOs to make that transition with their employees? So, so I think it's a, a super critical point you're making and totally agree with it. Ultimately, folks shouldn't have that presumption that big data is this kind of say that solves all of their marketing problems. It's a tool, it's just the means rather than the end. And in our mind, it's ultimately about bridging the, the value you can extract from data through automated technologies and big data infrastructure with intuition, certainly in the marketing space, which is still criti critical because no machine, no machine learning engine can truly empathize with the consumer and the consumer journey that's being made as, as a marketer can with their intuition. Because um, there's a lot of emotion that's involved with the purchase process. Hence, at least the way we're taking this uh, from a product development perspective and a market perspective, we're thinking about our solution as a way that helps bridge human intuition with underlying big data, first thing. Second thing, um, when, when looking at evolving a marketing organization from driving purely on intuition or mostly intuition to having the appropriate balance between being data-driven and intuition-driven, it's all about measurement and KPIs or business objectives. How to tie ultimately measurable um, key performance indicators um, rather than just, you know, activity metrics of the sort that you can find across the various social channels, how many likes, shares, retweets. More important, for example, for folks to measure what is the quality of the fan base they've created. Or if you're looking at folks coming in through some other acquisition channel, don't just measure the volumetric aspects of these things, measure the business impact of them. And SEMOs start driving objectives down in the organization, as we're seeing with many of our early alpha customers, they're, you know, gra grassroots uh, folks, the, the worker bee level folks, don't need to be particularly driven to, to start using data because they know they're going to be measured based on data-driven metrics, and then they start using these sort of tools as part of their day-to-day. -day. Interesting, so it's a combination of kind of incentivizing and, and kind of setting the tone from the top, but also kind of creating that organic movement uh, to yeah. adopt these kind of technologies and approaches. Interesting. Okay. Ofer, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Always great to get your perspective. Um, you know, we could have probed you, probed you a little bit more about your startup, <laughs> but you know, it's not our style. So we'll find out for the back channels, everything, and we'll report it on siliconangle.com. But uh, no, only kidding. Um, we respect your, your uh, stealth thanks. mode. Congratulations on your financing. Um, you actually know your big data. You have the big data chops there, so congratulations. And, thanks much. Uh, thanks for being on theCUBE. This is Silicon Angle, theCUBE, our exclusive coverage. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back with our next guest. We've got a great lineup of entrepreneurs, industry leaders, old school guys. I have Bud Colligan. I saw Kara Swisher, he might get her on as well. Um, this is theCUBE at uh, Stanford XL uh, Symposium, 17th year. We'll be right back with our next guest.